I'm back, bitches. Hello, this is Taylor. Yes, you heard that correctly. I have re-entered the corporate workforce. See the corporate triangle. I did about three months ago, actually, but you know me, I like to drag my feet on these big, important life update videos. And today I am finally gonna tell you about my job. Not just what it is, but a recap of what I did before, some reflections on my time working as a full-time YouTuber, my reasoning for taking the job that I have now, and my thoughts on the corporate world and jobs being transactional as a whole and how you should approach them and squeeze as much value out of them as possible. And do stay till the end for all that juicy info because I like to think it will be somewhat helpful. So first, a quick recap, because Corporate Taylor's been gone for a while. For those who don't know, I started a job as a management consultant after graduating from college. And if you don't know what a management consultant is, that's okay, no one really does. I'm just kidding, I've made lots of videos about it. This one in particular describes exactly what it is. Essentially, it's helping other businesses solve a problem that they have or a specific question that they wanna answer. So I worked at that consulting job for 14 months. <laughs> 14 months, it's like I'm telling you how old my kid is. <laughs> For one year and two months roughly, and then I quit. But before quitting, I interviewed at a different firm, received an offer, and accepted that offer. I did not start my new job right away though. I chose the latest possible start date to do YouTube full time in the meantime, to try to grow my channel as much as possible and make a lot of videos, which is exactly what I did. So when I say take the summer off, I was working as long of hours as I was in consulting, if not longer hours, but I was working for myself full time, which is pretty cool. And that brings me to my next point on the agenda. Some reflections I have on working as a full-time YouTube content creator. Oh boy, do I have thoughts on this, but I will just share one main one for now. So in my I Quit My Job video where I announced that I was leaving my consulting job, I talked about some pros and cons of working as a full-time YouTuber. And I think that the most obvious con is that it's not as stable as a corporate job if you were to compare the two which is what I did. I also said that the exit opportunities are not as obvious on the YouTube side of things. While I totally stand by these thoughts and I do still think that they're true, I do have to say my perspective on full-time content creation has changed a lot since then. I give it a lot more credit as a profession now for a couple of reasons. One reason is that I grew it during that time frame where I was doing it full-time to surpass my consulting income, which is still kind of mind-blowing to me. And I won't go on and on about how grateful and proud I am to have that because I know you'll click off, but and the second reason I give it more credit as a profession now, perhaps even more so than the first reason, is because of the other creators that I met in this time. You might not believe it if I told you, but YouTubers are some of the hardest working people that I know. And I know a lot of hardworking people. <laughs> Super entrepreneurial go-getters who are just doing really cool shit, whether it's the videos that they're making or the business ventures that they're starting on the side. And it's been super inspiring to see. And they make a lot of money if you wanna measure success that way. So for those who don't think YouTube is a career, because that comment definitely comes up a lot, it absolutely can be. All of this being said, I still want to do both YouTube and my corporate job. And we're gonna go over my reasoning and my thought process in a minute. So what is my new full-time job? I will tell you as soon as you hit the like button. <laughs> so I asked you guys to guess what industry I was going into at the end of my I Quit My Job video, just for fun. And I was actually overwhelmed by how well so many of you guys know me. People were guessing things that were super specific to my interests, like things in aviation, some super specific tech jobs, and it was just very heartwarming, I thought. <laughs> but I kind of gave it away in that video. Here's what I said. I'm not turning my back on consulting as a whole. I still think that it's a great first job out of undergrad, especially for those who don't totally know what they wanna do long-term. Fun fact, John Legend became a consultant right after graduating from Penn, so I guess you could say we're twinsies. Of course, he went on to become an international music sensation. We'll see about that one for me. Chokes aside though, it is a good job. You learn a ton of hard and soft skills in a very condensed amount of time. And what's in store for me, you're asking? Thank you for asking. Will I be doing YouTube full time for the foreseeable future or will I be starting a new job? After heavily weighing the pros and cons that you and I have just discussed, I did interview for another job, I received an offer, and I will be taking that offer. So I went on to become an international music sensation. Just kidding. But in that clip, you see that I still gave a lot of credit to consulting. And some of you guys picked up on that and left a comment like, so wait, why did you leave? And there's a reason I wasn't super clear about it. It's because I'm back in consulting. Surprise. So why did I go back into consulting? Well, as I astutely said in that video, you absolutely learn a ton of hard and soft skills in a condensed amount of time. I didn't want to leave consulting after 14 months, but I did want a new challenge and I wanted to work for the firm that I'm at now. And a little more detail on why I interviewed at the firm that I'm at now. They also just do a lot more work within the industries that I'm interested in. So I'm hoping that there will just be more projects to go around when it comes to those topics. It's also an amazing firm with very, very smart people. I mean, you'll find smart people everywhere you look. But there's a lot of them. 
at this firm. <laughs> More importantly though, I have a new perspective on what I want to get out of consulting while I'm in it since I have narrowed my long-term goals a bit. So what do I mean by that? Well, I know that in the future I want to start my own business or several businesses and hopefully I will be able to use my YouTube channel as a starting point for that in some capacity. So you might think, well, why are you not going all in on YouTube if that's your ultimate goal? I hear you and there is an argument to be made for going that route as well. However, I still really value being able to make those connections in the business world, whether it's with the other consultants at my firm that I work with or the clients that I consult for. Ideally, it would be great to work on projects within consulting that are in the industries that I want to go into myself for this very reason, to make those connections with people who have expertise in the things that I want to do. This might all sound a little bit calculated, but I really do not think that this is a bad thing to admit. I think it's smart. I've been talking about this with my friends lately, and I think that jobs are inherently transactional. People love to talk about how finance and consulting jobs specifically make you sell your soul to work those long hours. And yeah, I get it. You know, it sucks sometimes. But then why not also turn the table and figure out how you can squeeze as much value out of that job as possible? If you leverage it correctly, you will come out of it not only with these soft and hard skills in business, but potentially also tons of connections that could be immensely helpful to you and you to them later down the line. And you do not have to be an annoyingly persistent networker to do this. I really am not one of those despite how this might sound. I'm just saying that if you approach these jobs with long hours through a slightly different lens, maybe a more positive lens where you can focus on the potential benefits that you could derive from that job, there might be more mutual value to be captured than you think. Now, if I was tasked with writing down an argument against the position that I just took, I could do that too. The connections I've made to other people in the YouTube world have been incredible. So who's to say that that route would be worse than the consulting route, you know? But for now, I still like having both. Now, I usually like to go over some pros and cons with these things, but I will just say that one major con of having both of these jobs is that I grossly underestimated being able to do both the way that I used to. Because a year ago when I was doing both, YouTube was more of a hobby still. I was making some money from it, but it was by no means a mega substantial source of income. Now, of course, it's still a hobby and it's my favorite hobby, but it is also a business now. I make a lot of my videos on deadlines now because I have sponsors in a lot of them, which is awesome. But even more than this, I just hold myself to a much higher standard of quality than I did a year ago because I like to think I've honed my skills on what creates an engaging and valuable video a lot over the last year. I'm also a perfectionist with my editing, so <laughs> Virgo, am I right? <laughs> Just kidding. Although I think that is, I think that is a Virgo. Who cares? <laughs> While this is obviously an amazing problem to have, I've only been able to put out two or three videos per month since starting my job because I still control every single step of the video making process myself. And my channel has absolutely slowed down a little bit as a result, which I knew would happen. I'm not complaining. That's just the name of the game on YouTube when you create less, but I will figure it out. Hit the thumbs up to support if you want. <laughs> and some actual steps I'm taking to figure it out. I am kind of sort of in the process of hiring someone to help with the editing process because yeah, for those who don't know, or if you've never edited a video, and this isn't me complaining, I just, I had no idea before I started doing it myself, but it is so incredibly time consuming to edit videos. It's probably the most manual process of any process I can think of. I mean, there is no automation. Every single little cut, every single zoom, every single audio placement, there's no like shortcut key for that. It's, it's all manual. So it just takes a lot of time. It's personally my favorite part of the process probably. I mean, it's the part that will have me like banging my head against the wall at, you know, 2 a.m. But it is the part where at least for me, I like to think my creativity and my humor really comes in. So it's going to be hard to pass that off to anybody. And I would never pass it off 100%. I will always do the finishing touches or the second 50% of the edit, but I'll keep you guys updated if you care about that type of stuff. And regardless of how this search goes, the quality of my videos will not decline under any circumstances. I refuse. So that's the update. I am back in consulting and that's why. There are people all around me, so I'm gonna whisper this part. But for more career content coming very soon, hit the subscribe button for free and also the thumbs up while you're at it if you enjoyed this whatsoever. I will love you forever. Until next time, turtle out. Oh, that's a good thumbnail. I'm not gonna use it as a thumbnail, but. Meow. <laughs> you don't realize how many helicopters there are until you're trying to film a video outside. <laughs> also, this background, this setting, look what it looked like when I filmed in the same exact spot last summer. Isn't that crazy? And now I can update my LinkedIn. <laughs>